Okay, pair programming. So, kind of the stereotype is the programmer is this lone wolf working all night drinking Red Bull, right? Uh, don't, don't bother me, uh, I'll go there. But is there a so more social way to program? And what would be the benefits of multiple pro people programming at the same time? And how would you prevent this one person from just dominant, doing all the work and the other person goes get coffee, right? And checks their mail, right? <laughs> how, how do you prevent that, right? right. Uh, so, suppose there's a more social way and how do you keep one person from dominating? That's what pair programming is. And the goal is to improve software quality or making it done faster by doing two people at the same time. Now, it's not a natural thing to do, so we want you to try it in this class. And some people love it. Some students, they tried it and they did their projects that way. They met every night and they worked in pairs. And some companies love it. Uh, Pivotal Labs in particular is an example. So you should try this. This is a good thing to do in school and see what you think about it. So this is a picture from Pivotal Labs. There's their two employees here, Sarah and JR. And they sit side by side with the screens facing together. And uh, the, to avoid distractions, you know, you know this thing that uh, can distract you from paying attention, there's nothing else on these machines. You can't do Facebook, you can't do Twitter, you can't read email. It's just workstations. So uh, they sit together and they talk and they play two different roles. There's a role called the driver and that's the person at the keyboard entering code, thinking tactically about the current cost and explaining thoughts while typing. So if you've seen the, the, t the medical shows with the surgeon, the surgeon's explaining, I'm gonna cut here, and that, that's what the driver's doing. I'm at the keyboard explaining what's doing. The observer reviews each line of code as types in and acts as a safety net for the driver and is thinking more strategically and saying things. Uh, making suggestions, driver, somebody. So that's, you know, that's interesting roles. And if a pair program is working, there should be lots of talking and, but you're, and you're concentrating on the task at hand, not checking email. And it's an important part of pair programming that you alternate roles. That you don't want to have one person always be the driver, one person the observer. So 10 minutes, then you swap and go back and forth. So how well does this work? Uh, when it's not very complicated, it's quicker pair programming. When it's complicated, uh, it yields higher quality codes. And since somebody's looking at it, maybe more readable code. But some studies indicate it's more effort than solo programmers, that you don't get twice as much productivity from two programmers in pairs as one. Now, when we talked about our friends at, uh, well, let me just mention that, talk to our friends at Pivotal Labs, they said, well, I don't know, in this modern world with Facebook and Twitter and stuff, that's not factoring in the distractions of the modern world. We don't get those distractions. In fact, at Pivotal Labs, people come in at nine o'clock in the morning, go home at six o'clock at night, and they don't keep working. And the people who've been there for three weeks, they say, I've never worked so hard in my life. They're not used to just concentrating all the time in the day. So people go home at normal times. It's not, uh, it's not kind of the modern Silicon Valley way of managing people, which is buying dinner, right? That's the advanced, okay, well, if I buy them dinner, they'll work longer. So that's why I'm a manager, right? Uh, so, it's, so it's hard for me. I don't know what to say about this. It may not be uh, more effort, but that's what some studies say. It has this added benefit of educational benefit of transferring knowledge. When two people are sitting there, uh, you can learn some programming idioms from the other one or tricks of tools that you hadn't heard of or how this company works or latest technologies. And in fact, because of this, some uh, people do a pair programming, the team will, will swap where everybody works with everybody else to form pairs and that's called promiscuous pairing. So the do's and don'ts, don't, when you're the observer, don't be using your smartphone. Uh, it can work for people of different experience. You'll both learn. A great way to learn things is to try and teach it. Those of us, you know, if you want to become a, a, a teaching assistant, that's a great way to learn things is trying and explaining it. And swap frequently. This is, please swap frequently. Uh, you exercise different skills when you're thinking tactically versus strategically, and it's a good thing to do.